Welcome to another Factorio base tour. My name is Neil Lauz and this is an amazing base that's created by Lily Rose. It is a 4K fractal octagon base and we're going to go into a lot of details with this because I am blown away by the work that's been put in. If you recall some years ago, I did another review of a base built by Lily Rose that was beautiful with lots of flowing belts and this time it's, uh, it's all about them octagons. So let's uh, take a look at it first. I'm going to be explaining sort of the concept and then we're going to take a base tour and then, then we're going to go into sort of explaining how it actually works. But the core of this one is, as you can see here, there is an octagon. Every single assembler or furnace or chemical plant is generally surrounded by eight beacons in an octagon shape. And then as we zoom out, you can see they are built into some production octagons like this. Then when we go to the map view, if I go to the map view of wherever I am here, the map view then it continues outwards into what you can call like production districts, also octagons looking beautiful. And then we can zoom out even more and in, into these even greater areas of uh, thematic in terms of octagons, uh, yet again, an octagon. And that continues. You can see also in the middle, there's an octagon and there's even some octagons around the octagons between the octagons and the other octagons. And then the whole thing is wrapped up in a big oct oct octagonal uh, polygon here called an octagon. And even around it, we have another octagonal uh, train circuit all around so this is an amazing base it looks so good and it performs really well so it's uh it's doing a four four thousand signs per minute all of this and uh, as you can see there are lots of trains so i think that in order for us to really understand how this space works i think the best way is just to take a bit of a, a tour with the trains just going from the initial ore mining and all the way to the finished science product So that was a bit of a showcase of uh, how the products move around the base. I think it looked really nice that you can see that sort of, even though they might move uh, quite far, then with these small fast trains, they will quite easily get to where they need to go. And uh, the base is working as it, as it should. We can now go into a bit more detail about some of the cool things that are working, uh, how it's working. So let's uh, go through it with uh, the way that I'm I usually do it. I go through the different categories. We looked at the bit of the science. We can look at the production stat here on science. Uh, if I can spell science, it would be probably be easier. Science. 
Uh, let's go on a one ten minute here. Yep, I just started it. Yeah, 4.4, even when it's only on a 10. Oh, let's go here. 6.5, yeah, it's way overscaled. It should be 4,000 4, signs per second, uh, per minute on the sustainable. So right now it's just really burning through because it's been at a pause. So pretty damn amazing. Going through some of the other things like logistics, there is a global logistics network. This uh, primarily serves two purposes. The one is that uh, serving as production because uh, there are, what is it, 65,000 construction bots. Everything is paved. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of, of work in, in putting in here. There are so many things here in the in the space. So if what I'm if if you just sort of the benchmark numbers, there are 1,600 uh, train stations, 400 trains, and uh, 712 cells. And uh, yeah, that's a lot. So each cell contains 104 beacons. So well, that's that's going to be a lot of beacons. 74,000 beacons and 130 speed modules, 130,000 speed modules, and 40,000 production modules. So you can see quite a sizable thing here. And the design of this is a beautiful combination of the aesthetics, but also effectiveness. I love it. And it's also just not squares as someone else has a propensity to sort of get make things in squares. So I love the oct octagonal shapes here. Uh, that's the logistics. The other part of the logistics is, of course, providing input, uh, providing resources here for whatever needs to be produced, but not really anything else. There are a few mods here, but it is predominantly a, uh, a vanilla series. One of them is, well, a long autosave. That's not a mod. One of them is uh, the electric chains so that it's just, well, it's basically taking the, taking out the need for for fueling. And it's not really a big deal because fueling could take place in this depot. I'm going to save the trains for the last because trains is the most interesting and engaging part of this, which is the whole how the whole thing is tied together. Uh, one thing I want to show because power is always something. This is basically where the base was started. It started out here and then uh, Lily Rose built a little base, drove a train like insanely far away until she was happy with the size of the patches. You can see the patches out here. They have a pretty decent size. Very, very nice uh, until you get to a size where they just don't run out. Uh, but now the original base out here, original size of base, is now a giant, uh, yeah, a, yeah, giant uh, solar farm. Yep, so uh, 2.3 million solar panels, that's kind of a lot. It's also maybe a bit more than is technically needed, but, you know, it's there. Uh, the train system is uh, it's very interesting, and that's uh, where we're going to be putting a bit more into into just explaining it in high level. I'm going to go into the details because you can see it is driven by circuits. It is the Havolas the train network or the Vanilla train network. I have a tutorial on it. This is a bit outdated because it's before uh, 0 1.0. I have a tutorial on my on my um, on my YouTube channel here if you are interested. But the the essence of it is it is designed before the train limit was introduced in 1.1 as a as a way to using by using circuit networks to do a many to many train network and it works really well but it's uh, in my humble opinion i think it's it's a bit complicated to adapt and especially now that you uh, you have this train limit size then it's much easier so the way this works is you have train limits of 1 and then basically the trains enable uh, the stations enable disable my personal preference is to set the set the limits dynamically but this works as well uh, the advantage of this one is that it actually also has a every train has conditions for when it arrives departs and then it also has a depot where it's it's parking when it doesn't have anything better to do and all these depots are just called the same thing so it's really controlled by the circuit network. It's pretty ingenious. Uh, here you can see here on the global network, this one will list all the things that are available. The top numbers that are, uh, yeah, the, the big numbers, they are mostly in uh, 32. Oh, this, uh, this is a bit shifted. Uh, generally speaking, the lower numbers is how many, if you see three, three purple signs, that means there are three, trains full of purple signs ready to be picked up, which is nice. Uh, and that's basically how it goes. But there are some bit shifts here. 
that make uh, that transfer things to the global network and it's really complicated and that's uh, why I don't use it because I'll mess it up but this has been worked and it's uh, Lily Rose has built it of course but she's like, had uh, plenty of help from uh, Havolos the inventor of the train system a fire racer and Timbal as well for just making sure that the whole thing was operating and tuning it there are a number of other interesting things about this uh, train system generally I really like this intersection I don't exactly know where it comes from, but it uh, looks nice. It looks, uh, also, the with, even with the the signals enabled, it also looks uh, looks nicely curved here, and it has really high throughput as well. It doesn't do allow U turns, which I like, and uh, yeah. So then the, it's the the trains have to sort of make some compromises between all of these intersections, and just figuring out what are the how the build's going to be. So between in this, these big areas you can see here, the trains are going in. There is a just exactly room for a train stop in between here. If we look at something that's different, just to get a sense of it, uh, let's take one of the more advanced ones that has multiple inputs and outputs. Uh, what should we choose? What should we choose? Let's take some something here. You can see here the things that are coming in. So engines, red circuits, Sulfur is coming in and then blue blue science is going out. Looking really neat. This one is, see, yeah, it is standing on the outs and it's waiting for the condition that's getting a green signal for it to be allowed to leave the station. That is just how it works. Uh, some of these you can see here, they are not fully filled up. That's because it's designed to deliver a specific throughput. Also, if you really zoom down into this, uh, let's let's take one of those simpler ones, the ones we have here, and then we can go up to one of the more complicated versions here. So everything is designed around these oct octagons around each assembler, or in this case, a furnace. And then that means there will have to be some compromises about belt curvatures and all that stuff around here. Also sidedness on belts. You know, there's a lot of things that have to be compromised, but at the end of the day, it works really, really well. So that we get this and it looks brilliant as well. You can of course make it more compact, but that's not the intention here. What is, uh, is then necessary for all of this is a bit of a, it's not really belt spaghetti here, but it does have some, some quirks to it and I get lost in this kind of thing. So what you can see here is that the, the belts come out and then they have to go find their way back into the train stations so that they actually alternate between raw materials and finished product, raw materials, finished product. If we look at some of the other ones, now we can go into one of the more advanced ones. Let's take something like red or yellow science here. You can see here stuff's going in and then we have to combine the belts here, here. And then the slowly outputting from all these different directions on making sure that the sidedness is balanced here, then balancing back. And it comes back in, merges with one of the other ones, comes back, merges with something on the other side and goes back here going in. And then the, a big fat for four by four balances and to be put into a train that's now ready to go out and then filling up the buffer. So this one is just waiting for the science facility to tell that it needs another yellow signs inbound. This is a state a depot. This is the science depot. So each one of these science facilities. No, nope, there's only one, uh, one science facility. This one just requests as it needs it. Basically the idea is this one monitors how much is in here. And if it falls below a certain threshold, it requests one train. If it falls below a certain, a, it's a certain other threshold, then it requests multiple trains so that if, if it consumes the materials so fast that it by the travel time that one train comes in, then it would be running completely out. Then it can request multiple trains if multiple trains can be unloaded here at this before uh, in that time. So it's uh, it's working really well. You can see that this is just chugging along nicely, slowly, but it works getting spread out here with lots of balances and then going into some, some mixed belts into here, all the signs. And so from an overall perspective, it looks Absolutely beautiful. You can see here they have the greens, blue, blue, blue is always taking more space, purple, yellow, uh, some additional things for the rocket science and red and green. And up here we have like sections for red circuits, green circuits, a lot of steel production out here, more steel production, even more steel production go into copper out here, copper and iron up here, more iron. Oh, and then it goes into 
rocket control units, stones, stone, uh, steel furnaces or electric furnaces. Look at this mess. This is insanity. <laughs> I don't want to be debugging whether this is uh, whether this is working, but it you know it seems to be working. So uh, so it must be done correctly. But that is just, there must be a lot of situations where you go like, oh, it can't be done. Oh, actually, it can be done. If you just go under here and over there, this is a bit cramped. But it, hey, it works. And big bounces here. That's uh, kind of obvious for, what is this stone for? Oh, right. It's because there's also some some rails being done here. Yeah, that's uh, maybe throw some rails somewhere else. Yeah, I can see rails are also being done here. They maybe should be put here. I don't know. That's, that's a lot of parameters to consider. Rocket fuel, very simple as well. All of these things. And then of course we have some blue science as well. And so all of the things are just slowly feeding from the outside with the most basic materials inwards and into the science and into the labs at the core. So very much sort of a bit of the same idea as I had with my octagon base, but uh, this is just so much nicer, so much more, uh, so much better made. And also it has taken quite a bit more time to build if we do a take a look at the playtime so if we have the playtime it is almost but not quite 1000 hours into this base this is absolutely monumental effort and uh, yeah so big uh, big shout to uh, to lily rose for allowing me to to re to do a base review of this base and i hope i can only do it justice there's so many quirks and things to do but really at the, at the core of it it's very simple <laughs> I say that, but it's because it's the repeating pattern of the octagons, then that it is, it is in its beauty, it's in its simplicity that it has its beauty. The fact that it works and it has this repeating pattern that just, just absolutely works. It's brilliant. I really love it and I hope that uh, you love it as well. The save for this game is available uh, in a download in the link in the description below if you feel like it. And of course, if you, uh, are joining my discord then uh, be sure to let uh, lily rose know how awesome this space is so i hope that you are you find it as amazing as i do and want to just uh, maybe you want to download it just to check yourself and see how it performs on your machine it's it's kind of sluggish on mine but that's the that, that's that's to be expected with after 1000 hours of of building things in this space with that i'm just going to be Thank you for, for watching. If you have something that is interesting and unique, a base that you've done, then uh, feel free to share it with me. I'd love to do reviews of bases that uh, have something unique to offer. So uh, if you have it, then reach out on Discord. I'd love to see it and take a look at it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you won't be uh, following for other factorial content here on my channel. As always, stay effective.